So in zooarchaeology, there are three basic units that we use in our analysis. There's the number of individual specimens, the minimum number of individuals, and the minimum number of elements. And it's been brought to my attention that there is not really any content online about how to actually do these calculations, which doesn't surprise me because it's extremely technical. Um, but uh, I figure if no one else is going to do it, then I might as well, and maybe some students will get some use out of it here or there. So the most basic unit is the number of individual specimens, and that's just the raw count of how many bone fragments you've got. So uh, if you've got 200 deer bones from this that you've identified to the species Otocoileus virginianus, then your NISB for white-tailed deer is 200. Um, if 30 of those are tibia, fragments, then your NISP for deer tibia is 30. That's it. Minimum number of individuals is a little more complicated. That's where we're trying to estimate the least number of actual animals that could be represented by the assemblage we're dealing with, by our sample. So how many deer do that group of 200 bone fragments represent. Um, and in order to do this, we have to figure out how many elements are represented. So how many femurs do we have? How many tibias are represented? How many mandibles are represented? And so on and so forth. Um, and that calculation is called minimum number of elements. So we use our NISB to figure out our minimum number of elements, or MNE, and then we use the MNE to figure out the MNI, the minimum number of individuals. And this is really tricky, so I'm going to walk us through an example. So at the top here, we have our species name, Otocoileus virginianus, white-tailed deer, and we have columns for the proximal, distal, and medial counts, how many of our bone fragments belong in each of those categories. So the proximal is the part of the bone that is closest to the spinal column, and the distal is the part that's farthest away from the spine. So on your upper arm, the humerus, the shoulder portion is the proximal, and your elbow is the distal end, and of course you've got the medial section in the middle. And then we have a column for our first MNE count per element. And then our rows here, which are each element for the right and the left, and sometimes we'll have leftover parts that couldn't be identified to side. So we'll have an indeterminate row in those cases as well, and I'll elaborate on that in a bit. So you can see that for our left humerus, we have one proximal, one distal, and one medial fragment. And those could all be from the same bone that just got broken up. So our MNE there is listed as one because, like I said, all those could correspond to a single bone that got broken. And for the right humerus, we have three proximal parts and only one distal part and two medial fragments. So we have at least three right humeri represented by this sample, even though we don't have most of each of those. And we do this for each element that we've got. So for the femur and the tibia, we have those leftover indeterminate side MNEs. And this can happen because there are small holes in these leg bones called foramina, nutrient foramina, that are very distinctive in shape and orientation. But the actual shape of the bone fragment itself that we're dealing with might not allow me to determine which side it came from. And the medial sections are already all accounted for on both the right and the left elements. So in this case, for the tibia, we definitely have three right and three left. And then there's also one more tibia from an indeterminate side. So there's seven tibia, tibiae, 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 or seven tibias represented in this sample. So once I've done this first pass, I'm going to go back to my notes to see if any of those sections can't be matched with each other for whatever reason. 
and then start making some adjustments. So in the MNE2 column, I've highlighted the ones that needed to be changed. So for the left humerus, there was a proximal end that was much too big, too robust to match the distal or medial fragments, which means that there must be at least two left humeri in, in this sample, not just one. And then down in the mandibles, I noticed that one of them still had its deciduous teeth or its, its baby teeth, which would have made that fragment from a jaw that was too, too small and gracile to be matched with the ascending ramus or either of the two mandibular angles from, from that category. So I had to add one to uh, that MNE estimate as well. So next I'm gonna take all of those MNE estimates and use them to calculate how many individual deer are represented in the whole assemblage. And that's our MNI estimate. There's a bunch of extra elements in here that I didn't actually go through in that last example. So don't worry about that too much. Now it's just a matter of matching up the rights and the lefts for each element. And note at the top that there's an indeterminate slash X column, and that's for parts that either can't be cited um, because I, I can't tell which side it came from or because they're axial. So the skull and the spinal column are, are most of the axial elements, but also sometimes you get fragments of the sternum or some animals have a penis bone called the baculum. And so all those are axial elements. They don't have a right or a left to them. So I have to go through all these to figure out the fewest number of animals that could be represented by what I've got. So for the mandible category, I've got two left and three right. But remember that one of the left ones was a juvenile and it can't match any of the three right jaws. So that gives us an NNI of four for the mandible category. Down in the innominate row, and an innominate is just a, a pelvis that is, is halved. So you have two innominates that are fused to form the pelvis. There are three right and three left, but after reviewing the notes, I noticed that one was juvenile and another was much more robust, so probably male, than the rest of the left ones. So those can't match any from the right side of the body, which means that here we have at least five individuals represented, not three. And in the rest of the MNI column, there are no estimates higher than five. So five is our MNI estimate for this sample, for this assemblage. In reality, there probably were more individuals represented in that assemblage, but we know that there were no fewer than five in this calculation. So I hope some of you find that useful. And um, if there are any questions, you can, of course, put those in the, the comment section. And as always, thank you for watching.